Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. I want to take just a few minutes today to talk about hope, to talk about some good news, because a bill was just favorably voted out of the House Judiciary Committee called the Homicide Victims Families Rights Act. There are more than a quarter of a million unsolved homicides in our country. That's a quarter of a million families who quite literally sit by the phone every day waiting for a call to come from a detective, an investigator, an agent saying, we have a break in your son's murder case or your daughter's murder case, your spouse's case, your partner's case, your parents' case, your grandparents' case, your loved one's case. And for those quarter of a million families, I can tell you, friends, those calls almost never come. And those cases, those cold case homicides, sit in police file cabinets and storage rooms gathering dust. They go largely uninvestigated once they grow cold, in large part because of resources, but there are lots of other factors that go into that. In Washington, D.C. alone, where I was chief of homicide at the D.C. U.S. Attorney's Office, and I supervised 30 federal homicide prosecutors, we worked more cold case homicides than I could ever count. We worked some successfully to fruition with arrests and prosecutions, but so many others we were never able to close. And when I retired, from the Department of Justice a few years ago, I was determined to find some way to do something for those quarter of a million families for whom the call never comes. And so I had the great fortune of meeting and getting to know Representative Eric Swalwell, himself a former prosecutor, and he listened. He's the kind of politician who likes to listen more than he likes to talk. And he put me in touch with his legislative director and we started to work on what would become the Homicide Victims Families Rights Act. And it is a bill and it will soon be a federal law because it has bipartisan support that gives homicide families a statutory right, a legal right to have their loved ones cold case homicide reviewed and reinvestigated after three years. This is big, friends. And yes, this is federal legislation, and there aren't that many federal cold case homicides, but this hopefully will now follow the same path as two other important groundbreaking victims' rights laws, the Crime Victims' Rights Act brought on the books federally in 2004, and the Sexual Assault Survivors' Rights Act. Once those two laws were passed federally, federally, they became models, models for the 50 states to adopt and to bring real help to homicide families, to victims of crime. And that is what we envision for this federal law, the Homicide Victims' Families' Rights Act get it on the books federally, push it out to the states, and do some good, do some real good for those quarter of a million homicide families who are suffering mightily. I worked with homicide families for 22 of my 30 years, and they live in my heart. These are people who get a call one day that their son is not coming home from school. Their spouse is not coming home from work because they've been taken by violent crime. You know, if you think an anticipated death, a natural death, one that we know is coming, we know we're losing a loved one, we see them slipping away, that's hard enough for a family to endure, survive, and heal from when it's an une unexpected loss to violent crime. So, I'm going to ask you to just watch this short video. It is of Congressman Swal Swalwell reporting out the incredibly good news that the Homicide Victims Families Rights Act is 
been favorably voted out of the House Judiciary Committee, and he's good enough to acknowledge and thank me for the work I did with his office to make this a reality. And if I can just say to the quarter of a million homicide families out there, there is hope. And help is on the way. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for convening this important markup. As you know, every year, countless families leave mothers, countless homicides leave mothers and fathers without children, spouses widowed, and sons and daughters without parents. As we enter the holiday season, they're even more reminded of the emptiness in their homes. These senseless crimes spare no one, whether it's the unfortunate victim or the family member or loved one who is left behind to cope with lasting shock, turmoil, and grief. Far too many individuals experience prolonged helplessness as they seek closure when losing a loved one to a homicide. After all, murder never discriminates, nor does it prioritize. Instead, homicides leave family members and loved ones to somehow rebuild their lives one day at a time. And no legislation can reverse this, the destruction that results from such a heinous crime. It is still incumbent upon us to pass laws that expand justice and demand accountability. Special care is especially needed for cold case crimes. The FBI Uniform Crime Report estimates that 250,000 homicide cases are currently unsolved. The number of unsolved cases eventually attain cold case status continues to increase each year by an average of 6,000. And according to a Council on Criminal Justice FBI reports, unsolved murder cases hit a new high in 2020, with clearance rates falling well below 50%. As a former prosecutor, I saw firsthand the challenges of investigations running cold without readily identifiable suspects and where all probative leads were exhausted. Unsolved cases drain resources, resulting in higher burdens on law enforcement agencies across the board. The good news is that today, this committee will take an important step towards administering justice and accountability for families and loved ones of homicide victims. My legislation with Representative Mike McCall from Texas the Bipartisan Homicide Victims Families Rights Act would empower family members and loved ones to continually work with law enforcement to seek justice once a homicide investigation achieves cold case status. This legislation would require reviews and reinvestigations of homicide files upon request of a loved one or family member three years after a case goes cold. This would include a complete re-examination of the file and accompanying evidence, new or renewed interviews with potential subjects and witnesses, and other methods to possibly find missteps. Improvements in technology, resources, and evidence-based techniques will better equip law enforcement agencies with the tools they need to review files under a novel lens, one that would assist in identifying new leads and witnesses to solve crimes and obtain justice that victims, families, and loved ones so rightfully deserve. This legislation makes a promise that no victim will ever be forgotten. I also wish to thank former Assistant United States Attorney in the District of Columbia, Glenn Kirshner, who worked with my office after his years of working as a prosecutor and detailing to us the pain for so many families who see their cases of their loved one go unsolved. Glenn worked uh, with us for years to write this legislation and make sure that no victim is forgotten. Yeah.